Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. So Natasha Denona just released a brand new powder foundation and I wanted to just do a plain like OG YouTube tutorial video today all about powder foundations. So today I'm going to do two tutorials. One of them is going to be with a pressed powder and then one of them is going to be with a loose powder. This is not a review of the Natasha Denona Powder Foundation, but if you guys want to see like a review, a tutorial, like a swatch, how to apply that foundation, leave me a comment down below. It's just, we're doing a plain old fashioned like YouTube tutorial today. I'm really excited about this because I love powder foundations. I have found that as my skin matures, I am, you know, I'm 35 years old. As my skin matures, I found that powder foundations tend to work for me a little bit better in certain types of situations, especially because I'm also a mom. I have two kids. Powder foundations provide a really nice way for me to be able to do a full complete makeup look without having to go into all those extra steps. So today we're going to be doing like I said, two tutorials today. We're going to do one with pressed powder and one with loose powder. And I wanted to give you guys the whole 411 on how to apply powder foundation and also why I love powder foundation. So powder foundations, when they are applied correctly, they can provide like a creaseless foundation look. And it also helps you like skip a step in your makeup routine. And what I mean by that is you're not putting on liquid foundation. You're using the powder foundation as your foundation. So you can actually build it up to be like a medium coverage, a full coverage. Even some of them do actually allow you to get like a pretty decent full coverage. The reason why I like that not like I love powder foundations is that they give you like a blurring effect to the skin it almost like minimizes your pores and your wrinkles and it doesn't crease in any of the fine lines so if you do have some fine lines powder foundation may be the way to go for you so it gives a blurring effect to your skin it literally decreases like the look of fine lines and pores and it doesn't settle into your fine lines or anything like that um, it does provide a quicker makeup application, especially if you're unable to dedicate like a whole lot of time to your makeup routine, but you still want something that's going to cover your blemishes, blur your skin, that's going to just make you look even across the board. Powder foundations can do that for you. Typically, you can use a powder foundation for any skin type, but you do have to be aware of some things before you use a powder foundation. If you have like dry skin, make sure that you've exfoliated or you don't have any like dry patches anywhere on your skin because it will cling to those dry patches. Also, if you have oily skin, just making sure that you are well balanced before you put it on because you can actually get clean spots to places where you tend to overproduce oil if you're if you haven't done the proper skin prep before you put this on. So I definitely recommend like if you are prone to dry patches on your face that you do exfoliate your face before putting any kind of powder foundation on because it will cling to those like dry patches and it'll actually just over accentuate it so much. How do you apply a powder foundation? The first thing I like to do is a lightweight moisturizer. It's from e.l.f. It's the oat milk. And I like to, this is all a part of my skin prep anyway. I actually like putting on a moisturizer just like basically every single day because I do have dry skin and I need that extra built-in moisture. Because of the way that it adheres to your skin, you don't really necessarily need like a grippy primer. Grippy primers actually aren't going to work for you. If anything, it's a moisturizer that is going to help because you are applying the powder product directly to your very like moisturized skin and it will cling better to your skin if your skin is moisturized but not like with a power gripping primer. I suggest using just a simple moisturizer and this is just going to put some moisture back into your face and make it super buoyant. And I also do recommend SPF. Every single time that I go outside these days, I'm wearing SPF. And actually, you should be wearing SPF throughout all four seasons. I recommend a mineral sunscreen. I don't like the sunscreens that are oily, that have like an oil to them. And typically, your mineral sunscreens, they actually have 
like this like feel that it like dries down like a powder and it doesn't interrupt any of the powder products that you're putting on and honestly that can be said for like a liquid product as well is that it actually doesn't disturb your makeup because it just dries down and it almost feels like powder dry but it doesn't leave that like oil cast that you get with other types of SPF that aren't mineral based. We're using the Toti Solera Mineral SPF Sunscreen. It is an SPF of 50. This is like my favorite sunscreen, like I said, because it is a mineral sunscreen and it literally just dries down and it doesn't leave that weird like oil feel, oil slick, if you know what I mean. That's why I don't like typical SPFs because if they don't dry down right, my face just feels oily. So my face feels like we got SPF, we got moisturizer, we are good to go. This is all you need for a powder foundation. The first step that I actually like to do after applying my SPF, if you are the type of person who has maybe some color correction that needs to be done, or you would like to conceal some blemishes, and you want some like extra coverage, this is the time to do it. So I have a Pro Sculpt Contour Palette from LA Girl, and this is cream product. Cream product tends to marry very well with a foundation that's powder. So I, I like to do some color correcting, and this has like a salmon-y shade in here, and I tend to get just a little bit of like dark eyes. So what I like to do is very gently pat this into the under eyes, before we put on the powder product because if you put this on after the powder product it's not going to work it's going to pill it's not going to look right it's going to cling funny so always put on any kind of liquid concealer or cream concealer or color correctors before you go in with the powder product so i like to go in and just conceal like the redness i actually have a green one down here that i also like to use like if you get redness around your nose like me and you can actually go in and just very gently blend this out so that you can kind of cancel out that tone right there. So again, this isn't all over the face. This is just where you want to conceal, where you want to color correct a little bit. The Pro Sculpting palette is like $8.99. You can use any kind of Pro Sculpting palette, like any kind of cream concealer, or you can even use a liquid concealer to just go over any places where you feel like you need to correct or conceal. And this just adds like a little bit of coverage. Like if you have like a a really big like blemish or anything, like I have a couple in here. Um, like I said, my nose is like super red and I get a lot of like problems like in here with my, my baggy eyes. That's where I go in and I conceal. And you would just use, even with a liquid product, like a liquid concealer, you would do that as well. You can use cream, you can use a liquid concealer, like I have the Tower 28 concealer. Sometimes I like using this because it's a little bit thinner in consistency, but I decided to use the Pro Sculpting Palette today because it has those color correctors in there for me as well, especially because I am so red right in here because of allergy season and blue. So for powder foundations, we're gonna go in with a pressed powder foundation first. This is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Powder. It actually comes with a little sponge, or you can use a brush. Now, if you want a full coverage look, if you want more full coverage, then you can use the powder. You can use a powder puff like this, like, you know, the old school Tati Blendful, something like that. You can use this and you can create a very full coverage look with it and it's very like airbrushed. Or if you're the type of person who likes to use a brush, then you can use a brush. That's gonna give you more of a medium application. So it really depends on what kind of foundation look you are going for. If you want something that's more full coverage, you can use the sponge. If you want something that's a little bit more medium coverage, you can use a, a brush. I always recommend a flat kabuki brush. This one is actually just from like, I think Shein is where I got it from. I like more of a medium coverage, especially because I've already concealed like these areas. And typically when I wear a powder foundation, all I really wanna do is cover up and even out my skin tone. Now keep in mind, this is not gonna be a luminous finish by any means at all. This is gonna be a totally matte finish. We're gonna use the L'Oreal Infallible Pressed Powder. I'm gonna take my Kabuki brush and I just stamp it in here. And if you want kind of an airbrush look, more of a medium coverage, you can use a brush. And I like to stipple this into the skin first. And that'll give you a little bit more of a coverage. And then I just slowly buff this into the skin. So I will do half of my face so you guys can see what it looks like. 
with just the brush. And you guys can see the kind of coverage that you're going to get. You also want to make sure that you are actually getting like under your under eyes so that you're blending the powder into that cream or liquid product that you also put on your face. So here we have one side with the powder, one side without the powder, and you can't use the sponge to get more of a full coverage look. So I will show you what it looks like if you do use like a sponge or a powder puff or anything like that. I have something that's really similar to the Tati Blendable. I just pat this in and what you can do is swipe it on your face like this. And this does create more of a full coverage look. And what I like to do as well is just pat this on the under eyes and it gives me more of a full coverage that way too. So this is the side with the powder puff. This is the side with the brush. You can tell it's a little bit more full coverage here. It's a little bit medium coverage here. So there's definitely a difference between the two. I like using these powder puffs specifically because it just gives it more of like a airbrushed look to it where it's a little bit more flawless. Sometimes the sponges can over accentuate a little bit, but let's just take the powder puff we're going to finish applying this to the rest of my face so that I look even because I can't remove product. I can just add more product on. Now, if you did want to use a brush, you could and you could build it up very slowly. But you also want to make sure that you don't put too much on where you're unable to completely blend it out. And then you start getting a cake face, which can still happen with a powder product. So this is what the skin is looking like. It's very matte, but it's also very like cohesive across the board. And can you tell that this is with a powder product? No, you can't. Like, it's so nice. It's such a great application. And if you guys are looking for a good powder product that is very full coverage when you apply it with a sponge, the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear is great. And I actually have the shade 5 Pearl because I'm like pasty pale. But this is such a, a great powder foundation for you to be able to use to get a really nice full coverage look. After I apply my powder foundation, I actually like to go in with a setting spray. If you do want to add a little bit of like glow or like dew back into your face, then you can do that. You can add, you can use like a milky mist hydrating setting spray and this will bring some like life back into your face. But overall, like powder foundations, they are matte. They are not glowy at all. They don't have a luminous finish. This is what they look like. But I've heard that we're getting back into to matte makeup. So I'm okay with this. This is going to set the powder foundation in place and it's just going to give it more of a flawless look. Sometimes I'll actually use like a, a blow dryer and like blow dry my face just a little bit so that it like sets in and it like adheres to my face. But we don't need to worry about that today. So this is at the point in the makeup routine where you can use a blush, a bronzer, a highlighter, but I only recommend using powder product because if you use like a liquid or a cream on top of the powder, it will strip the foundation. That's just something that happens. Sometimes you can use like a cream product like underneath the product and you can layer it that way and kind of do like a reverse face without the actual foundation but it really depends on the type of coverage that you want with the foundation. All right, here is the completed makeup look with pressed powder as a foundation. I mean, this is a pressed powder foundation. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Pressed Powder Foundation. If you guys wanna see a full video on the best powder foundations, the ones that work for my skin, definitely leave me a comment in the- Now we're gonna get into the loose powder tutorial. Okay, so. Loose powder foundation. I did the same exact skin prep as what I did for the last foundation routine. Just a moisturizer, a SPF. I did use some concealer this time. It was the Tower 28 concealer and I used that instead of the LA Pro Sculpting Kit just because I want something a little bit more lightweight today. But you always do like your cream and your like liquid products, like your liquid concealer before you put on the powder foundation. We're going to use the Bare Minerals. This is the original. It's a loose foundation, powder foundation. I have the shade Fairly Medium 05, and it actually has a broad spectrum as of SPF 15. Now, you'll notice like it does open in the cap here, and I like to just use any product that's in the cap to tap into my skin. Now, with a powder foundation, we went over like you could use a brush, you could use a sponge, with loose powder, I don't recommend using a sponge because it just doesn't apply as well. It kind of, it can leave you with a very uneven application. So I like using my flat kabuki brush. And what I do is I just stipple this into the skin first, making sure that I'm getting a pretty good application of product. You'll notice like the brush is decently coated and I just stipple this into my skin. 
Now, when I get the desired effect that I want, the desired coverage, I do like to also buff this into my skin and it just gives it kind of a airbrushed quality about it and it actually helps with the coverage of the foundation as well. This is in the process where like if you want to build up your foundation and you want to get it to be more of a like full coverage or as full coverage as it can be, this is the step where you want to buff it into your skin so your skin really is taking in all that product. But you'll see like the difference between this side of my face versus this side of my face. It's much more even. And again, this is a matte finish. You're not going to get like this glowy, dewy base with this because it is a powder foundation and powders are matte. With a loose powder product, you really don't need a lot. You just gen you just coat the brush just a little bit, pat it in, and then airbrush it around. The Kabuki brush, though, is what makes it like pat into the skin better. But look at that really nice coverage that you have. I really like the way my skin is looking. It looks like skin. It's breathing like skin, and it's just this very natural, flawless coverage. Now, if you wanted to build it up, obviously, like I said, you could dip your brush in a little bit more, swirl it around, and you could get a really nice coverage, a nice application of product. Before I move on to any of the powder products, like the blush, the bronzer, and if you want to do a highlighter, I do like to set this down with a setting spray. So I just generously take my setting spray and split all over my face. I let this dry down for a minute because you don't want the powders to cling to anything funny on your face. And then you just go in with your normal blush, bronzer, highlighter if you wish, application. So this is what the face looks like with all of the powder products on. Cream products are underneath. It is just a very simple, easy process. And the Bare Minerals is honestly one of those powder foundations that just like melt into your skin. There are several powder foundations out there. I just, I have this one and I love it. And I think it's a great loose powder foundation that just applies flawlessly on the face. So you guys can see it provided a very like medium, almost full coverage look. My skin is breathing. My skin looks blurred. It looks airbrushed. It looks flawless. And then we just have some blush, bronzer, and highlighter on top. And this is what my face looks like. And literally it took us like five minutes to do this. <laughs> Turn it off. Everything keeps dinging over here. It's like ding, ding, ding. But I have like a full page of notes because I had to write it all down. I had to get the collective brain going. Oh, Stacy.